You may have seen this trick where if you hold a tennis ball over a soccer ball and drop them together, the tennis ball kind of flies up in the air like that. Now, if you want the ball to go really high, one option is to simply drop it from farther away. So here we go. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there we go. Another way to get it to go higher, though, would be to understand the physics of what's going on. So let's look at this, this case. So we got two balls um, and a ground that they're going to bounce off of like this. M1 is big, M2 is small, and they fall together under gravity. So they have the same speed going down. So you could say that V1i is the same as V2i because they're moving together. Okay. Uh, but what happens, M1 kind of sits here and moves up a little bit, but M2, uh, it moves up much faster. All right, so V2F and V1F looks kind of like that. Okay. So we can actually treat this as a collision, because what you do, the, the condition is, at the moment of the bounce, Uh, M1 reverses direction because it elastically collides with the floor. Um, reverses direction and hits M1. So we think of it as an elastic collision where they have the same speed, but they're going in opposite directions. So you can imagine maybe there's a slight gap and M1 hits the table first and then hits M2. So it's really a collision that way. So we're going to analyze this. We're going to think about this as the positive direction. So plus x is up. So we'll define velocities up will be positive, velocities down will be negative. We want to think of it in terms of numbers. And our goal here is to say, how do you get the maximum height of V2F? How do you get it going as fast as possible? What conditions would you want to set? So you might say, I should write down V2F and analyze it. Right? So that was 2M1 over M1 plus M2 V1i plus uh, M2 minus M1 over M1 plus M2 V2i. This is V1i, V2i. So really the question is, how do you make that as big as possible? Well, you don't actually do it with that expression. What you want to do is say, for maximum V2f, how are we going to get the maximum? Pretty much, you want all the kinetic energy to go into this mass. Right? We have a finite amount of kinetic energy. It's however fast they're going when they hit. You want it to all go here. You want none of it to go here. Right? So for the maximum V2F, transfer all kinetic energy um, to M2. So what that means is make V1F 0. So set V1F equal to 0. And that should give you some condition for when you get the maximum push on uh, the small mass. So we actually don't want this equation at all. We want this equation, V1F. What was that? That was the difference over the sum M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 V1I plus then the 2M2 term, 2M2 over m1 plus m2 v2i, uh, like that, right? So we want to take that and say that has to be 0. So we say this equals 0. And that doesn't get you too far except for one thing. Remember this, at the moment of the bounce, m1 reverses direction and, uh, and hits m2. Right. So these speeds, right when they hit, they've built up the same velocities, the same speeds from gravity, but then this one switches direction. So that really, all that means is that um, uh, you could say V1i, or V2i, equals negative V1i. Those two are the same. So what we could do is say, let's take this uh, V2i and say it's V1i and just make this negative, like that. Okay. Well, so our two conditions then, we set it equal to zero, we made this true, and now we have all this equal to zero, and we can cancel the common terms. V1i, cancel that, divide that out to make it zero, 
And also the common denominator, m1 plus m2. You can multiply through by m1 plus m2, cancel all that, and it's still equal to 0. And then you end up with just what's in the top, m1 minus m2 uh, minus 2m2 equals 0. All right, so that's minus 3m2, the other side. And you get that if m1 equals 3m2, this will be true. So if you want the maximum jump of the top ball, you want the ratio of their masses to be a factor of 3, is what the simple elastic collision problem told us. So to see if that's true, I got on my Amazon account and I ordered every source of bouncy super balls that you can buy. You would not believe like the suggested purchases on my Amazon account are really pr pretty wild. Um, but I bought a bunch of them and I started weighing them all and I found these two are pretty good. They're the same color, unfortunately. But this one is 49 grams and this one is 15. So that's pretty close, the closest factor three I could come up with. Yes, I could start shaving them off, but you know, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so I'm gonna hold these on top of each other and what we should find is that when this one drops, unlike the soccer ball, remember the soccer ball, it still moved up a little bit. It, it, the soccer ball retains some of the kinetic energy, but now this one is really gonna lose all the kinetic energy Therefore, it's all going to go to the, um, the little ball. Here we go. So there you can see the bottom ball, it rolled a little bit, but it pretty much stopped. It didn't go up in the air and gain kinetic energy. All the kinetic energy went to the small ball. So you've probably seen this before, maybe on YouTube, maybe you saw a physics girl do it with three balls. And then that third ball goes way up in the air. So I haven't worked out the math for a three-way collision like that yet, but let me see what I can come up with. 